There she is, a beautiful Musa banana tree. And you can see the smaller banana down in the bottom here, that is actually a Cavendish. If you see right up in this area, that's the banana cluster we're going to harvest today. And I've let these bananas go so far that they actually started to turn yellow on the clump, which is not necessarily something I have done in the past. I usually pick them somewhat green. That makes them a little delicate when they're like this. So got to be very careful. <clears throat> the method I use involves actually chopping the whole banana tree down and that's not a problem because banana trees are really just gigantic blades of grass. You can think of them that way. Chop down one blade of grass, another blade grows. That's very much what happens in this banana tree. Now, there are a lot of nutrients in that vegetative matter that you take down, the tree itself, the, the banana plant. And all of that I will return back to my yard. I chop it up into small pieces and I put it into my composter, then it returns right back into the ground. Another way to do it is to chop up the banana into small enough pieces that it decays quickly and put it around the base of your banana clump. That's another excellent way to do it. But I would never just throw it out in the yard waste. It's full of nutrients and it's a great compost material, so I always use it. Okay, let's get into cutting this sucker down. So this is the point in the video where you might be thinking, how do I get more of this guy? How can I get more YouTube channel coverage and content like this? Well, you might check out Jedi Jingle Maker, which is where I put all my original music. You might check out One Step Zen. That's my philosophy and meditation channel. You might check out Surf All Day A1A. That's my surfing channel. Or even One Step Now, where I review products I use. So lots of channels to choose from. I encourage you to go check them out. Okay, now, I always like to plan out where it's gonna fall, but what I'm gonna do is cut it up pretty high, and I actually won't get rid of this, this part right away. I'll leave that because I wanna just process a small part of it, and I always remember that whatever I chop down is going to be a lot of weight, and that makes it kinda harder to steer, so really the higher up you chop it, the better. Come back later and chop these up. What I like to do is chop them into logs about a foot long, and then just give them a machete chop right down the center and they just fall off into perfect mulch sized pieces. All right, so like cutting a regular tree, I usually try to give it one little cut on one side and then another cut on the other. So I don't want to go too far because that'll start to crack. I heard it actually crack a little bit there. I almost went too far. main thing I'm concerned about is making sure that fruit doesn't hit the ground. I'll go 
glad it's holding a little bit there. The more gentle I can make the process, the better, the less it will damage on the way down. Remember, I'm not trying to be too kind to it. This is perfect, actually. I can't believe one banana has not hit the ground. There we go. All right, that's actually in a great spot that I could harvest it. Now look at that thing. Just look at it. You see the water dripping down. How much this thing is just filled with water. All that's going to go back into the yard. But is that incredible? <laughs> the size of that incredibly huge banana flower. Now, some people will eat this banana flower. It's an excellent thing to do, actually. Um, I might eat it. But the banana flower itself, you simply snap it off. You can boil this, reboil it a few times, but it is edible and great. Certain cultures, they love that, so I'll put that to the side. Uh, this part, I'm going to snap up high, and I'll just really snap it into a few pieces, and I'm going to throw that right back in to the banana clump so it decays, and that nutrient that the plant needs goes right back in. And you should remember that when you do the chop and drop practice, which is a pretty standard permaculture thing to do, one thing I've loved to do, uh, it does a few things. One thing is that it helps you trap the moisture and in a very sandy environment like where I live here on a barrier island, that's incredibly important. Anything we can do to keep the water from returning into the atmosphere, the better. But the other thing is that it's putting back the actual micronutrients, the nutrients that the plants need, that the plants produced, and it's creating a cycle of nutrient return that just makes perfect sense and it's so easy to do so it's a little aesthetically you know sloppy looking i suppose to see piles of brush all around but that is the way to go for sure and i actually come to really love the look of that so uh you know that's how i deal with it okay now let's take this off this saw by the way this pull saw this curved pull saw i'll put a link in the description to it but it's uh, you know one that I just got at Lowe's, but this is the kind I've, I typically use for this type of job, but also sawing trees. And the reason is I can get a lot of control. Oh, as soon as that released, I could feel the weight of that. That has that is every bit of 35 pounds, 40 pounds. Oh, that is amazing. What a bounty. Check that out. Give you the, the full harvest. Beautiful Musa bananas. All right, now there's one that's fallen off. It's so ripe, it just fell right off. I'm gonna give that a try. These little finger bananas are so much better than the large grocery store bananas, and I do not want to rest this down on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna put this over onto the thing first. So after all, this is Eat Your Backyard, so let's go ahead and give this a try. There it is, beautiful little banana. Again, goes right back in to the garden. To me, a very satisfying thing to do. And you'll notice that the, the peels on these are very thin. Nothing like the peels of commercial bananas that you might be used to. And there it is. That's incredible. That's as good as a banana gets. You ever eat a banana on the internet? <laughs> All right, so let's finish the job here.
Okay, so now that we have the bananas harvested, I want to separate them into two groups. So I brought two large bowls. One is for the ripe, and the other is for the to be ripened. And that'll provide me probably with enough for two full dehydrators of bananas. And that's how I'm going to store these, is I'm going to dehydrate them into nice dry banana chips. All right. Now, In some cases, you might want to just cut each one of these hands of bananas off in order to keep them all together. But in my case, I'm going to be processing them. So uh, really, I'm going to have to pick them off anyway. So I just like to use a little clipper here and then take them off and put them in a bowl. You might just get them to fall right down into the bowl if you're lucky. This method is certainly my way of trying to minimize damage to the bananas when you try to get in there with a machete or whatever to get those bananas that are, you know, to make the cuts in here, you tend to nick the other bananas and that's a bummer, so. All right, they're coming off pretty well. That's not what I wanted. Ooh, I see one has a split down the side. That's interesting. That's usually a sign of overwatering in my experience, but probably a bit guilty of that on these. I, I really wanted them to come out well. All right, let's see. So I made sure they had plenty of water. I think most of these bananas on the bottom are not there yet. Most up at the top are. It's kind of a mix of green and yellow here. Let me take them out in these little mini hands, huh? Isn't that cute? All right. I might end up giving some of these away too. These are so fun to give people. I mean, who doesn't want a little set of mini bananas? Kind of universally loved. There you go, that's what you're left with. This will go right back into the banana grove. And I had a pretty nice harvest of bananas, certainly. Look at that. There we have them separated into the ripe and the need to be ripened. So I think that's gonna work out just fine because it's about one dehydrator full in each bowl. So thanks for watching. That was enjoyable. Got some bananas out of the deal. I have some that are ripening, some that are ripe, and the ones that are ripe, I'm gonna get right into that dehydrator because I don't wanna miss out on preserving that energy. That's way more bananas than I can eat and they'll just end up getting rotten and get thrown in the compost bin if I don't put them into a place where I can store them. So dehydrating is the perfect way. Another good way is to freeze them, but it depends on how much freezer space you have. I really don't have a lot, so uh, I don't use that. And I think drying is just a more convenient method, really. Okay, so thanks for watching. It was fun. I hope you do subscribe. See you back next time.